Apparently, the number 11 is for suckers. Windows stopped at 10, Huawei skipped 11 after the Mate 10, and now Samsung is jumping straight from the Galaxy S10 to the Galaxy S20. On last year's Galaxy S10, Samsung added a bunch of fancy new features like triple rear cameras, an in-screen fingerprint sensor, and punch hole selfie shooters. And now with the Galaxy S20, Samsung has spruced up its next phone with a focus on display tech, bigger camera sensors, and 5G support across the entire phone line. Before we dive in, let's go over the S20 lineup and the differences between each of the three devices. Starting at $1,000, the standard Galaxy S20 is actually the cheapest of the bunch. It comes with a 6.2 inch AMOLED screen, and like every version of the S20, it also has a Snapdragon 865 processor, 12 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of base storage, and a micro SD card slot. But not having a 3.5 millimeter port basically kills any dreams of seeing a headphone jack on a flagship Samsung phone ever again. The S20 also has a 12 megapixel wide angle cam, a 12 megapixel ultra wide cam, and a whopping 64 megapixel telephoto cam that Samsung says has a 3x lossless zoom. However, while the vanilla S20 does support 5G, it only supports sub six gigahertz 5G, which means for Verizon, whose 5G network is based solely on millimeter wave 5G right now, they won't even carry the standard S20 in stores. That brings us to the Galaxy S20 Plus, which starts at $1,200 and comes with a 6.7 inch screen and a slightly bigger battery but for the most part has the same general specs as the Galaxy S20. The main difference is the S20 Plus features support for both sub six gigahertz 5G and millimeter wave 5G. So you get better 5G service across a wider range of networks. There's also a time of flight camera that helps with various AR features like Samsung's AR doodles. Finally, there's the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which costs a wallet quivering $1,400. Like the S20 Plus, the S20 Ultra has a rear time of flight camera and supports both sub six gigahertz 5G and millimeter wave 5G. For all that money, you also get an absolutely huge 6.9 inch display, a giant 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and a super thick camera module that features a 100X space zoom. That's not a joke, that's actually what they call it. Now technically, every Galaxy S20 has at least 30X zoom capabilities, but on the S20 and S20 Plus, Samsung is just using image stacking and sensor cropping to deliver digital zoom. On the Galaxy S20 Ultra, Samsung is combining 4X optical zoom with pixel binning and cropping to create what the company is calling a 10X lossless zoom that goes all the way up to 100X when combined with digital zoom. That's enough to easily spot a bird in a faraway tree or catch the action from way up in the nosebleed seats. And if that's not enough, the S20 Ultra's main camera uses a massive 108 megapixel sensor that combines nine pixels into one big pixel for even better image quality. All told, Samsung says the new cameras on the S20 line represent the biggest photo upgrades to any Galaxy phone since the Galaxy S7. And while we haven't had a chance to test them properly yet, that's a real bold claim. Aside from new cameras and 5G support, the S20 family's other big addition is a 120 hertz screen, which makes everything you do from gaming to just scrolling through the settings look super smooth. However, there is a catch. That 120 hertz refresh rate only works when the phone is set to full HD plus resolution. So if you go into the phone settings and switch the S20's max WQHD plus resolution, you revert back to 60 hertz. We're guessing Samsung added this limitation to prevent the S20 from sucking down too much battery in 120 hertz mode, but it's still kind of a bummer. You'd like to have that option. And as with every new generation of Galaxy phones, Samsung added a bunch of new features too like the quick share tool, which is basically Apple's airdrop for Galaxy phones, an enhanced super steady video mode with improved stabilization, and a new single take camera mode that captures multiple pics and videos using all of the phone's rear cameras at the same time, but only for up to 10 seconds. That's a lot, but for its price, Samsung really needed to pack the S20 full of as much as possible. The S20 Ultra in particular feels like an absolute beast. And even when you're just holding it in your hands, it seems like it came from an entirely different phone line compared to the S20 and S20 Plus. But still, I can't help but wonder if this might be the year Samsung pushed the price of the next Galaxy just a bit too high. Either way, we'll know more once we get a chance to test them out closer to the S20's official release on March 6th.